Yo, this is Itana Plays Pokemon Violet. We are the champions, my friend. However, we cannot complete our journey in the Pokemon League without fighting the same person who told us to become champion in the first place, Nemona. We defeated Jira, the lead, the Pokemon champion, or the prime champion even. So we are champion ourselves now. But we have to face Nemona now because Nemona demanded this challenge. It was because of her that we even did this in the first place. And now she says, come to the central plaza of Mesagoza. She will wait for us there. And when we come there, she wants us to face us one on one. And her Pokemon are high level. Her highest level Pokemon is 66, which is very high. Make sure your red team are ready for it as you go. In my opinion, if you didn't have much trouble beating her before, you shouldn't have a problem here either. But she can be tough, so make sure you have your eth you have your rem you have your revives, your potions, all that ready. So that you can have a chance against her. Because this is gonna be the last battle in the Victory Road saga. And this will also be our last battle in the whole uh, end game. As we go in towards the post game, or should I say end game part one, I guess you can call it, because end game part two will start after this battle. Once you've done all the three main objectives, final parts, we get to the end game part two. And after that, we enter the true post game of Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. Feels good that we've gone so far though, since starting the game, going to Cotondo and all that. Now we're going to face against Nemona, again, but this time it's a champion versus champion duel. This is the battle court down here. She waits for us, and it's time to see which champion is the best. Any second now. There you are, Satano. You ready for a battle between champions? Because all the folks are seems ready to watch. Word got around, I guess. And out of every single person gathered here, I'm the most excited by a mile! <laughs> Even Larry. The stage is set. It's my all out power. Versus your strength in full fruition. Let's see who comes out on top. Let's go! Champion Nemona. And her fruit power. Her first Pokemon will be Lycanroc. -like. That's why I changed that Zuma. Finally, the thing I waited for all this time for. Time to begin the greatest battle of all! I love the music in this one, by the way. So, yeah, her team is 65 and 66. This is the highest level team you've faced so far. So, Lycan Rock is a rock type weak to water. From Stone Edge. I heard a bit, but not too much. Liquidation. One of the most best, in my opinion, one of the best water physical moves because it has perfect accuracy. I think that helped you teach the type matchups. Now I'm using it to put them hurt to me. Well, you said you want to go full out. So that's when I'm going to go full out. Next up is Palmot. We know Palmot, right? We have our own Palmot to fight. Now, Palmot is also weak to Fairy. But we're also weak to Electric, so we have to be careful, though. That's why probably we should change things around a bit. But we can use other types too. We can use Cloudsire. Cloudsire is great here. Because poison is resistant to fighting. And ground makes it immune to fighting. So Cloudsire is great. I haven't really used Cloudsire for a long time. So let's bring Cloudsire. Here it comes. Come on. 
Let's do this with an earthquake. Ice punch. Super effective. How do you like my real hard hits? Man, it feels good to finally lose. Yeah, Nimona will have TM moves on her Pokemon to counter you, but don't worry. Pokemon goes down in a single hit from Earthquake. Next up is with Orthworm. So Orthworm is also weak to ground, so you don't need to change if you don't want to. Orthworm is the Pokemon that we faced off earlier that was a uh, Titan. This is a pure steel type. Let's go with another Earthquake. We use Earthquake too. It is super effective. Yeah, you're also weak to your own type because of poison. But here you can see, you can't use Earthquake on Orthworm because it has the Earth Eater ability. It's immune! That sucks. Oh well. We'll get KO'd here anyways, might as well just use this turn to heal up our Pokemon. We'll get KO'd anyways because we can't really do damage to it. It's immune to poison and ground. So we'll just switch out. Like this. We'll just force ourselves to get KO'd, that's fine. The Orthworm will not be weak to fire though. That's his weakness. If it's not weak to ground, it's weak to fire. And fighting. But it has ground moves. So we need to be careful. Both Pomot and Skeldurge are weak to ground though, so be careful. Shouldn't be a problem though, let's use Flamethrower. Super effective, one hit KO, Earthworm is going to go down. Next up is Gudra. So Gudra is a dragon type. Dragons, weak to dragons themselves, weak to ice, and fairy. Let's get in a zoom reel again. Here it comes. Here comes the Gudra. Yeah, you see the Gudra, even like the goo from his arms and his jaw and all that falling down. <laughs> Kinda creepy, but then again, it fits the name though. We'll play rough. Touch Bomb, super effective, because of weakness to poison. No worries though. Play Rough is gonna KO it, it's so powerful. Azumarill with huge power is so OP, so broken, so strong. No, it's the Dune Sparse. So the Dune Sparse is the evolved form of Dune Sparse. This one has a typing change. Or no, not the typing change, but it has a uh, evolvement. People say this is one of the most laziest evolutions in ever in Pokemon. But Dune Sparse can become the Dune Sparse just funny. So Dunspar just gains another one of its body parts added to it. Dunsparts. So the Duns so Dunsparts has its head and then its body part and a tail. Now it has its head, its two body parts and a tail. Is it even three? I can't really count. But it has an extra body part of it. That's the, uh, the whole addition of the Dunsparts. It's still a normal type though. Let's use close combat. One hit KO. The fence and spirit defense is gonna go down, but that's fine. We can just switch out if we need to switch out, or we can just, you know, take the damage. The last Pokemon is Meowskarada. Well, let's make this the way we started it. Let's make it starter versus starter. Skeledurge, your rival calls. Now we have to be careful though, because yeah, we are fire versus ghost. Uh, fire versus grass is super effective. But she has the dark type. I got Nelskarada. She will always use the starter that is weak to your starter. So if you chose Nelskarada herself, she will have uh, Quakowal. And if you chose Quaxley, she will use Skeledash. Let's try slice and go with the flamethrower. Shine blazing bright, my greatest treasure! Here it comes. Now it's a pure grass type. But we also will change into pure fire type, so we don't need to worry about the dark type moves it's going to use against us, if it were to use it. 
Here it comes. Here comes the fire type. Now it's pure fire versus grass, and of course, you know, fire wins. Here it comes. Petal Claw. Not effective because we're no longer the gross type. Here comes Flamethrower with power up. Here it comes. And it's a one hit KO. Miaskarada goes down. And that, as they say, is that. No EXP for that even at all. She's... <laughs> she's dapping. You... You did it! This is legend incredible! You're the strongest out there, Sitano! I mean, you knocked me flat, and I was giving absolutely everything I had! Everything I... I... Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Oh man, Pokemon battling, am I right? It's so much better, so much more fun than I ever knew! Thanks for an incredible match! You beat me for real this time! Don't cry, hustle, please. And let's give ourselves a minute and have a quick break, Sitano. Before round two! <laughs> what? Come on! <laughs> it was like, no. Which one should I bring out this time? Decisions, decisions. <laughs> I'm like, no, please give me a break. I need a vacation from you. I need a vacation far away from you, Nimona, please. Uh. Well, Meteor Road is done. We have a phone call. Yo, Arvin here. Whoa, damn boy. Don't jump up like that. Seems like hearing your horse has hold marble stiff I walked up, Stano. Oh, that's not why I called. Nearly forgot. Um, you remember what we talked about before? About going to Area Zero? Uh, yeah. Of course you do, you little know-it-all. Good to mind like a steel trap, eh? Well, all the effort I've been putting in around Paldea has really helped you make a name for yourself. Build up some goodwill, that's for sure. So, I've been able to secure two allies who want to go to Area Zero with us. That should have been ready to tackle everything. So now we all just gotta go get there. First, I will be gathering at Area Zero. I'm already waiting at the Zero Gate. I'll send a location on your phone, too. Don't leave me hanging forever. So there is the area zero gate. We'll be waiting. Now probably you can see that we didn't get any credits here now because yeah, the end game is not over. Not at all. So now we can of course go to school and talk to some people wanting, talk to Clavel, nurse office. What do I even have to say, maybe? I just want to talk to him. After why I have the team start. I don't think he has anything to say, though. You can see. Ah, Masetano. How kind of you to stop by. I must say, I am pleased to see you on school grounds again. Travel and adventure certainly have their place, but it does one good to attend class as well, no? Being a witch, there is something I would very much like to ask you. I understand you have joined a variety of classes during your time here at the Academy. But if I may ask, which of our faculty members have made the most favorable impression on you? Um... I don't know which one. Um, probably Miss Ryford, because we did the history class a lot. Oh, Miss Ryford from history class, you say? Yeah, she's a fine teacher. Extreme discerning in her interests. 
We are truly blessed to have so many wonderful teachers and staff members at UVA Academy. I firmly believe that our faculty is second to none in their commitment to our students' ongoing education and well-being. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts, Master Sitano. You can close the Dr. Clavel. I guess that's a bonus, I guess? Yeah, it's just more some story cool stuff, but it's fine. It's fun, though. Speaking of the stuff, let's go meet with uh, Miss Rayforto, actually. There she is. Ah, you're... Ah, yes, Itana, from class 1A. The way you conduct yourself in my class and the answers you give to my questions, I admit they pique my interests. You're quite the interesting people, I must say. Tell me, Sitano, given that choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things that are new? Mm, I like new things. I mean, I've... Hard to say. I mean, there are some conservative things I like. That are old stuff, but I generally like new stuff. Like if I had to see buildings that have like old architecture, or building that look very futuristic, I would go futuristic. Not just because I'm playing Pokemon Violet, but I just like that in general. Because I feel like technology and society and everything, time itself goes forward, not backwards. You would answer new stuff to me, your history teacher. Huh. You really are a curious one. Yes, this one may indeed be of good use to me someday. Ah, you can disregard that. I was simply talking out loud. I joined the conversation today. You have my thanks, Itano. Yes, if we come closer to her, you might be getting some cool bonus stuff. If you care to. But now if you go to the entrance hall, you see that you can talk to her again. It should be over there. But we will not be talking to her now because it's going to trigger something else. This something else is something that we're going to do after Area Zero. Because it's part of the end game. Or should we say the post game? Can do in the end game too, but I rather do act as post game. A bit more fun. So yeah, we didn't get the credits because the the end game is not over. So we can say that the end game part one was the phase was to meet with Arvin at the lighthouse, fighting against Clavel and Cassiopeia or Penny at uh, Nar at the academy, and then finally part three was to fight against the elite four and the champion at the um, Pokemon League, and then finally Nimona up here at the Mesagosa. And that was the end game part one. Now comes end game part two. And that is to go here. The zero gate. So go to the zero gate. Just do that right away. Just head over to Medley. Do that right away. That's the closest part to get there. So from Medley, you can see on the map here, there's a part goes up here, up here, then up here, and then through a little tunnel here. And is this is the indeed the path that we are going to take. Of course, it's the wrong part of town. We need to go. Here's the part. So we just go here, and then we go up this part here. And go up the part here. And then we just look, go to the southern exit of Medley, which is just near the Pokemon Center. Item here. Might as well grab items while we're on the way. I mean, they're free! Just pick them up. 
Max Eater, for example, is super strong. It's an end game item for sure. Restores all PP of a single move. Can be very useful, especially against moves that are have like five PP. Can be very hard to recover. See the tear right here. Meow tear as well. Like a potion. Ah, Toad Screw, Ghost type, four star rate. Anyways, here is the gate. We go through here. We'll be reaching the zero gate ahead where Arvin and the other two members of our squad is waiting for us. And when we go there, we will initiate Endgame Part 2, Area Zero. So next episode, guys, we're going to go inside. We're going to meet with Arvin. Just give me, give me a gold coin. We're going to meet with Arvin and the two party members that are going to join us. And then we're going to head to the depths of the great crater Paldea, known as Area Zero. I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell it before, I just like to remind the people, Area Zero is amazing. People say it's one of the best, if not the best part of Pokemon ever, of all 25 years of Pokemon. People, or even more than that, 25 years and Pokemon in the West, I would say. But Pokemon came out in 96, it's 27 years. Anyways, of all the years of Pokemon, people say Area Zero is the best part. It's so great. Story time is great. The music is great. The graphic is beautiful. And some of the plot twists we're going to see is really, really, really cool and fun. It can be a bit tear writing too. If you love an emotional person, you will fail some tears because it gets emotionally heavy. It's amazing. I love it. I really hope the writing team and uh, Toby Fox, the guy who made the music in Area Zero and all those people come together for future games because if this is the future Pokemon, people can say whatever they want to do about Scarlet and Violet because the future Pokemon is bright. Legend Arceus was fun. This game has some great moments but it held back for technical difficulties. Aside from that though, I love Pokemon. You know that. You know this will be my last Let's Play. You will see me play Pokemon games. Hopefully you meet me online as well. But we are not done with Pokemon yet. We are far from it. Next up, guys. Part 2 of the end game of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's Area Zero. Finally. We're going to the depths. To the dark depths. If you, if you watch the anime, Made in Abyss. This is the Pokemon's version of Made in Abyss. It is indeed horrifying. But awesome. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That's going to be it for now. See you guys next time as my journey in Pokemon Violet Con.